hey guys hello everyone and welcome to the channel so in the previous video where i have discussed about the difference in phd from india and abroad particularly us so i have discussed about certain points which needs to be taken care of and how phd in india is different from doing phd in abroad and especially from us so i'll give you link of that in i button if you want to watch that video so here i am i'm going to talk about because i got a lot of queries in that video regarding like how to join a phd in us okay so i'm here to talk about that in detail and uh, by the end of this video you will be able to get to know a lot of things regarding phd in us okay and how you can basically join and in some other video i'll be talking about phd in europe and probably about other regions uh, uh, apart from india where you can join as phd okay so let's start with it and first of all let me tell you one thing that is very important to know which many of the students which i also was not aware about when i was in india i was not aware about this fact that in india you know that in order to do phd you get funding from like those phds are government funded like you qualify exams like uh, jrf or you qualify exams like you know uh, there are different jrf like csir jrf ugc jrf then you have icmr jrf so different different jrfs are there. the fellowship which is provided to you comes through these organizations but uh, that is funded by mhrd which is government of india right but in us the the fellowships or i would say the phd is not government funded majorly it is institute funded and uh, it's funded by funding agencies for example nih is there which is national institute of health which funds most of the projects uh, related to life sciences and biochemistry biophysics and uh, you know related stuffs so these are called funding agencies over here and these agencies fund a particular lab so how do the process goes let's say if i am a professor or i am a supervisor over here i will write a proposal to these funding agencies and they are going to fund me uh, for that particular project and from that project fund i am going to give that uh, money to a phd student okay so that's how it goes for the initial sum period uh, the institute pays that but for the later of the period the, the project uh, investigator or the pi that is the person who basically provides the money so that's how it is different you don't get money from the uh, from the government itself but you get it from a particular funding agency which gives it to your uh, supervisor and that supervisor uh, gives that money to the student okay so that's how the first flow does and it is quite similar to the institute fellowship which you get in iits and isers in india okay now um, of course like when a particular person is uh, you know responsible of providing you funding and all the related stuff so you have to be you know that person is going to uh, expect a lot many things from you so that's where the phd students over here come and like that's how they are going to choose a phd student based upon their expectations so joining a phd over here is not like any national level exam which is in india if you qualify the exam you might get a phd that's not the case over here you have to apply to institute you have to apply to a particular research is uh, sorry a particular pi or a supervisor and then that particular pi or supervisor whether he or she is a uh, ready to accept you or not based upon that you are going to get selected over here okay so that's how the whole process works now there are two ways of joining phd the first one is uh, through the institute portal that means in, during the session when the session starts fall session and spring session these are the two sessions which is which are over here so during these sessions a particular institute opens up their application portal and you can apply through that okay now in, the, in that particular portal they have lot of criterias like they might even ask you to qualify a certain amount of gre score or certain amount of TOEFL score okay or they might not ask for that also they might ask a certain requirement okay because they have to also uh, you know uh, they also have to scrutinize the students based upon something so for that they have this gre or TOEFL so that is majorly asked when the when you apply through a portal or when you apply through application portal of a particular institute right so you apply like you you have to look upon or you have to keep looking for those applications the best way to get a player like about these application is through linkedin or twitter you need to follow these particular or you need to be active on this platform in order to get to know that when a particular institute or when a particular uh, like university is opening their application portals so fall session means the intake or the uh, the joining will be in the month of july august okay 
whereas the spring session means that your joining will be in the month of january december january okay so based upon that if you are applying for a fall session your applications are going to start uh, a little bit like three or four months before that uh, so you might expect applications in the month of may june uh, or probably april may and june and then if you are applying for the spring session then you can expect your application in the month of october november september october november okay so you have to keep an eye on the applications when these application portals are opening and like that you can apply you have to go through their portal like every institute or every university will have their own criteria so it is very subjective it might vary somewhere as i said they might ask for gre or TOEFL score some some places they might not ask for that okay so you have to look for that and you have to apply accordingly so that's the first way of getting into phd and, and after that once your application is selected then uh, of course you have to uh, choose a particular pi and then interview will be done and in that case you will be taken as a student over here but again uh, one thing which i forgot to specify that you should be aware about your topic of interest that is really important when you are applying you will definitely be asked about your research interest or your area of interest okay and then that is also quite possible that they might ask you during application portal itself that which pi or under which lab you want to do so two two, uh, two things you have to choose uh, before applying uh, for a particular institute one is your area of interest that should be very clear in your mind because your questions or your interviews are, are also going to be based upon that and the second thing is uh, you should be aware about that which lab you want to join okay so you have to look upon that uh, that particular um, website of that particular institute and see their faculties over there and then choose the one which belong to your area of interest and then write their name or select their names okay so that's the first way of going through the portal the second way and uh, the more uh, like you know straightforward way is by applying to the pi directly so this is a way in which uh, you have to write an email uh, along with your cv and along with your statement of purpose statement of purpose will also be asked in the in the portal okay so statement of purpose is basically how uh, like what basically you want to do in research okay that's what it is it's not research proposal but it's like SOP is like a brief idea like what you have done already what you know and what you want to do so it's something like that I'll make a detailed video on how to write a proper SOP or how to write down an SOP so I'll be making a video in, in detail so do let me know in the comment section if you want that video okay first of all yeah so the second way as I was telling you is th uh, applying directly to the PI so for that you have to again you should be having your area of interest clear in your mind you should scrutinize the labs in which lab you want to apply and over here there is no application or you don't have to wait for fall or spring application you can write a mail throughout the year anywhere in these labs so you have to choose a lab you have to directly write the mail to that particular professor and in that mail you have to mention that you want to join as a research scholar or you want to join as a phd student and if they have a vacancy or not and you have to attach your cv that is your curriculum vitae and your SOP which is a statement of purpose okay so that's how uh, you can directly apply for that and of course in this case if you have already qualified GRE you can mention that in your application portal and uh, if you have any uh, you know specific knowledge of the subject or if you have done some internship if you have some certificates if you have done or if you have any achievement you can mention all of them so do let me know if you want a video on this also like how to write a proper email that's called cold email okay these are called cold emails because you are just dropping these emails to different professors and you have to write down or you have to send this email to many places who have like because in every university or in most many of the university you will be having a lab working in similar area of interest for example just to give an example let's say you want to work on metal organic frameworks which is MOF so uh, you might find a lab working on MOF in let's say a California University then you find a lab working on MOF in let's say Florida University then you find a lab in New York working on the same topic so you can send the mail to all these labs okay uh, yes you can of course uh, tell about your achievements and all those things which I have said and I will make if you will ask me I'll make a detailed video about that but yeah this is the second way how you can approach and uh, then it depends upon the PI whether he or she and uh, believe me you won't be getting re uh, replies of all the mails okay you can't expect that if you have written five mails you are going to get reply of all the five mails if you will write let's say 10 20 mails you might get one or two replies okay because 
they these are the people who are getting mail regularly all from all over the world so they don't uh, if they don't have a vacancy they don't really care to even read the mail okay so if they will be having vacancy and if they find your cv and your sop interesting they might you know ask you to for a zoom call or for a meeting and then uh, they will definitely they are, they are they are themselves going to tell you what is the further process like how you can further proceed so that's the second way of applying for phd in uh, you know us so these are the two major ways or two ways of you know applying for phd in us uh, that's what i got to know from many students and from many colleagues about it and that's why i wanted to share from all of you so yeah the time is there you can start looking upon and start making your uh, you know cv better you can start making a proper cv for applying on these places you can start writing your sop and impressive and interesting sop so that your chances of getting selection increases then you should be also able to write down a good email to apply to these places so that you know your chances of getting selection selection increases out so also i will like to mention one more very important thing that if you have some research interest or if you have some research experience basically uh, prior to joining phd if let's say you have done some internship or if you have joined um, as a project assistant in some lab some similar lab and if you have done some work similar to the one which you want to do phd then the chances of getting selection increases more especially when you are writing direct mails okay so these are certain points I wanted to mention and I wanted to share with all of you that how you can join PhD in abroad. I hope the video was meaningful to you and do let me know in the comment section if you want any detailed video on the topics which I have mentioned. Thank you so much for watching for this particular video. I will see you guys in the next one till then. Have a great day. Bye bye. Take care.